Get ready for marketing insights, business strategies, and growth tactics from the original founder and marketer of The Daily Dose, no matter what those other guys claim. He's the original marketing entrepreneur who helped bring big business, media, marketing, and the public sector to the internet, while keeping government happy and away from overregulation of the digital age. And he's got the savvy and proven experience to help any business grow and succeed. You're listening to Marketing Insights with your host, Yasha Harari. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Marketing Insights. Today, we're going to look at some news in crypto. There's been a lot of news recently about the price of Bitcoin and Ethereum and predictions about whether or not Bitcoin will rise to above 10,000. That's the next new high. If we're going to pass the 7,000 mark first, all these predictions that you're seeing from different experts, traders, investors, people that really know the markets, but do they really know the price of crypto? Well, when you have experts like Tom Lee, who has gotten a lot of predictions um, not correct, let's just say, is it possible that we'll see things like Ethereum hit $1,900 by the end of this year or within the end of next year? Yeah, it's possible. Maybe not the end of this year. There's only like 12 weeks left or something. Uh, you know, just about three months. And um, well, rather just, just a little over three months, I should say. Um, well, the question is, will, will Ethereum rise to levels not seen before by the end of the year? Um, maybe. My guess is no. My guess is we're in for a long uh, climb back up uh, before we see a big growth surge, a bull run as they call it. Um, because if you look at previous years where you know, crypto rose tremendously and then eventually dropped back down a little or a lot, um, the time that it takes uh, has been as often, uh, you know, as it has happened, it's, it's been months or sometimes years before it rose back up to previous highs. Right? If you look at the 2013, 2014, 2015 years, you know, after the big dump, uh, it took some years for crypto to start rising again. And really, it wasn't until the end of 2015 when prices really started to grow back up. And then all of 2016, they started to climb nicely and 2017 we saw that you know constant sort of growth across the markets until you know, after the summer ended and the q4 started last year when prices just went through the roof for the last quarter of 2017 and it really did take some time to get there people forget you know they think oh you know it was a big bull run maybe it'll happen again tomorrow you know, it, took, it took some years to get there and it's going to probably take some time to get back to those record highs. Uh, but record highs isn't what a market really needs to grow all the time, right? It needs more trading action. It needs more investors, obviously, in the game. It doesn't necessarily mean to, they need to be buying at the highest prices. I mean, yeah, sure, you want prices to go higher and higher, but spikes, whenever they happen, tend to be spikes. They look like spikes on a graph because they go up and down, right? If it was just going up and then partly down, it's not really a spike, it's a growth, right? Um, but the fact is we've seen a lot of spikes in crypto and it's for a very simple reason, speculation. And speculation isn't a bad thing, right? Speculation is actually very necessary. Uh, speculators who would go out and look for the first, you know, mines of gold back in the day and who would go out for finding gems and who would look for other precious you know assets that people found in natural resources over the millennia of human history um, same thing with crypto right people are speculating that prices will go up as a measuring stick of whether or not to invest in this new technology in this new form of money or yeah, digital cash whatever you want to call it um, that doesn't really matter. That doesn't really make or break a financial market 
right, whether or not they're speculators. Speculators just help build momentum and help set the stage for ultimately what should be a more stable trading market, right? Something that's more predictable where traders and analysis actually matter more. Of course, as long as you have all these you know, people moving markets and manipulating markets and institutions are you know, able to manipulate markets very easily, um, because crypto is still a relatively small market, it means that the speculation is not, you know, a traditional form of speculation so much um, because it's so small, right? Normally, speculation in bigger markets are not quite as prone to manipulation as they are in smaller markets like crypto, obviously, because the larger the market, the harder it is to move it, right? It's a lot harder to move. Uh, $2 trillion market than it is a $200 billion market, right? Um, as for whether or not any particular crypto will go up or down in price, it really depends a lot on the, not just the trading volume and the, you know, volatility and all these sort of things and whether or not people believe the crypto will do well. A lot of it has to do with the utility of it at this point. And I've been saying that forever, that you know, crypto needs to be more useful Crypto needs to be easier to use, and it needs to have less friction, it needs to have less problems that are standing in the way of the actual use day-to-day -day of crypto, you know, cryptocurrencies. Let's put it this way. Uh, if your grandma doesn't know how to use crypto, then it's not mainstream, right? And if you don't have an app that's easy enough for grandma to use, she's not going to use it. And that means that the average person Okay, maybe not, you know, maybe grandmas aren't the average person, but if, if the, if you know, the oldest generation are not able to get into this, um, that means that you have an entire portion of people with expendable cash who are not using this technology. Um, and that's a problem because that means that for all its use and all, all its amazing capabilities, crypto uh, is going to be stuck in a place of just speculation until the actual tech rises to the challenge and delivers what everybody's waiting for, which is easy to use, fast transactions that are secure, no one questions their authenticity or you know, whether or not they're worth what they say they are. Um, there's just so many elements of an active market that cannot take place as long as the only thing driving it is speculation, right? So you need speculation, yes, but you do need practical utility. Do you also need store of value? Well, arguably, you know, is cryptocurrency a new form of gold? Well, you can't make anything out of it physically, right? <laughs> at least not yet. Um, maybe you could convert cryptography uh, or cryptocurrencies into 3D items by paying for a 3D printer to make something, but that's really not you know, unless that thing you make is a form of cryptocurrency itself or is a form of digital asset or other kind of asset or that can be retraded into the digital sphere back and forth. Um, you know, cryptocurrency is digital. It's not a tangible, you can't hold a Bitcoin, right? And if anybody ever tries to sell you a physical Bitcoin, watch out, right? Because <laughs> it's not that. Um, and a lot of this comes down to marketers and whether or not, you know, they're able to tell the story correctly of their brands, of their cryptos that they're marketing, and whether or not they can actually make it useful. Um, I've been fortunate to work on a whole bunch of interesting projects with crypto, and one of them is a project called Ethlite, right? E T H L Y T E. And why Ethlite, I think, is so interesting compared to so many other cryptos uh, is because it's actually a community crypto concern, right? And well, what does that mean? Um, well, crypto, uh, by definition, is just a form of money. Um, but the projects themselves all have different intents or reasons for existing, right? Bitcoin was born as a sort of rebellious action against banks that were perceived by early cypherpunks as being unfair and unjust and, you know, playing with money that they didn't essentially own. Um, that the banks and the governments decided, hey, we're just going to print more of this stuff to get ourselves, you know, bail ourselves out. And that doesn't really, you know, that didn't produce anything beneficial, let's say, for a lot of people with money in banks. Um, 
whose money suddenly became a lot less valuable. Uh, and all because the government wanted to pay the rich banks to make sure they didn't have problems and they didn't go out of you know, business or all the investment firms didn't go out of business, even though they had been doing a really terrible job. And that's why we had the bubble of 2008 and we had other bubbles in history that are essentially caused by bad management by people with a lot of money and power on Wall Street and elsewhere around the world, right? So, um, Ethlite is a cryptocurrency which looks at the problem of the fact that there are more than 2 billion people on the planet who are currently unbanked, right? That's a significant problem. I mean, think about that. One in every, like, one in every three and a half people or one in every three and a third people does not have access to proper financial services. Um, think about that. Your phone right, is a more common device around the world, and your handy smartphone is a more common device than a bank account. Right? Something like 99% of the population has a phone. Right? And many people have more than one. Right? Most people probably. But not most people have uh, access to banks and access to banking services. Not everybody has access to microloans. Not everybody has access to P2P loans. Not everybody has access to escrow services. Not everybody has access to insurance services. Not everybody has access to basic purchasing services like debit cards, right? Or gift cards, or just the ability to send cash to friends um, easily and without a massive transaction fee from Swift or whatever network you're using. Um, and the you know, the matter of fact is that um, with such an enormous population of people being unbanked, we're stuck in a place where, uh, you know, there's this huge duality, right, of people who are haves and people who are have-nots. It's not just a tale of two cities, it's a tale of two worlds, right? two populations who have very different economic advantages or disadvantages with very different economic profiles and financial profiles and uh, status and whether or not they can access things, all because of money, right? And um, all because of the financial services that they have access to, right? If you didn't have access to all the systems you have, uh, I don't know what your particular status is, but if the, you know, if the other two-thirds of the world didn't have access to those financial systems, just think about how much harder it would be for people to do business and for commerce to grow, and for industry to grow, and for markets to grow. Right? So having access to financial services is vital for any market, any economy to really grow properly. So Ethlite comes along, and it's a ERC-20 based token. And what that means is it's pegged to the technology that underlies the same technology as Ethereum. Um, it's a little different, right? Ethereum in and of itself is slightly different than ERC-20. Um, rather, let's just say the, you know, the Ethereum technology, the, the ETH coin or token is slightly different than ERC-20, but ERC-20 is essentially uh, syncopatic yeah? uh, with Ethereum. They go hand in hand. And that's also one of the reasons that you saw Ethereum price take a huge tumble over the past quarter because of all the ERC-20 tokens that have been falling apart and going under and you know, because they didn't have a good plan and they were really just greedy, self-interested ICOs or token sales or whatever they were. There were ways for the founders to raise quick amounts of cash and get out of the market even if they were ripping other people off. And that's just a terrible thing for everybody. It's not good for the market. I mean, it might be good for the owners who have a lot of money at the top, but uh, it doesn't do much or at all anything for the investors who put all their money in only to see their money fizzle into nothing, right, after the token was taken off the market, essentially. Well, Athlite is different. And in a sense, it's different because Athlite is built around the community concept of having more people being able to access basic financial services, right? Not just sending cash peer to peer, which is the original idea of Bitcoin. Right. Ethlite is aimed at helping more than 2 billion people have access to things like debit cards and gift cards and escrows and insurance and P2P loans and micro loans and micro lending and 
you know, merchant cash advance and all these other financial tools that are available commonly in the market, um, but not for almost a third of the world. So why is that good versus many other forms of tokens? Well, again, most other forms of tokens are not concerned about delivering actual day-to-day -day practical services at the stage. They're all looking at very high-tech or innovative things that are on the cutting edge of you know, new ways to transfer assets from one party to another. And that's all well and good that they're pushing the envelope and they're innovating new technologies and new ideas and new applications, but until there's actual use, um, you know, then they're really going to be minor players, if at all. Uh, so, as I spoke about, you know, in a recent video about marketing use cases, you'll see that many projects don't have good use cases, and that's why you know, the top three forms of use cases are decentralized exchanges, games, and gambling, right? Because those are the three maybe easiest ways to create value or to create some actual useful application. So, Ethlite again solves that problem by having debit cards available gift cards available, um, all these other services, escrows, etc. that I spoke about, available for just about anyone, right? You don't just have to be, I mean, they are designed to be able to handle high-end customers with a strong financial profile. Yes, they're absolutely capable of servicing people with massive wealth, right? Um, but the real purpose of it right, is, again, to help people who are have-nots to get into the game, to have financial stability, to have financial tools that can make their life much more practical and easy and fun. Um, and that's something that's very important. And that's why I think that it's one of the you know, most interesting, best cryptos currently launching or out there. It's already in the mode where you can go and buy tokens, uh, the crowd sale mode, essentially. Right? They're not doing an ICO, right? They don't plan to do an ICO. They don't plan to do an ICO at all. They plan to just do a crowd sale, right? Uh, there's an airdrop for it. There's a bounty program for it. But essentially, the way that they're going to make this crypto be distributed and used day to day is by having more people actually buy in to the token and to distribute that use by actually having applications that are practical, right? Think about how practical debit cards are for most people, right? Um, in fact, they're so practical, a lot of people don't even have credit cards anymore. They just have debit cards, right? Because they can't get credit cards because their credit's so bad because the banks messed them up in 2008 or whatever. A lot of people haven't recovered or choose not to re-enter that market. They choose to just keep their money in you know, cash positive accounts. And so they only use debit cards because they don't want to go into debt, essentially. Okay? They just want to take out money that's actually in their account. That's why I like Athlite. That's why I definitely recommend it as a form of you know, cryptocurrency to look into. Um, proudly marketed, if you will. Uh, and I'm helping that community to reach awareness and to reach acceptance you know, by as many people as possible. Um, because I believe firmly that solving the big problems, solving the way the human experience behaves around money and finance and making everybody's economic status um, raise itself up as much as possible globally. Uh, I think that that is the future of cryptocurrency as a mass market effect that is actually positive and not just a manipulation by wealthy people in banks or financial institutions who just want to control, right? And want to have all the wealth to themselves and they want to be the top 1% who control most of the money. Well, that's not the way Athlite is. Athlite has a very small number of coins relative to other coins. So Athlite has only 10 million coins max supply, right? And, you know, that seems like a small number. Obviously, when you break it down you know, to the whatever decimal place, it's many more. Um, but Ethlite has 10 million coins max supply and will have significantly less after the burn that's anticipated. Um, but even at 10 million, right, um, 
it's a small enough number that it has scarcity value um, and it has a different proposition it's not saying hey you know we're selling um, these tokens to compete with you know, ripple or whatever we're not trying to compete with that system f light is really there to be you know a useful financial token that also has some useful store of value and has the ability to deliver really massively useful financial services to people. Um, you know, there are other tokens out there that I think are equally of value, absolutely. Um, but I think that Athlight is doing something that's very innovative. Uh, it's actually building a crypto around the idea of community, right? of, when I say community, I mean uplifting the level of the quality of life of any given community that uses cryptocurrency, right? So you could have, starting with tiny little villages somewhere in the third world, or you could have, you know, big cities somewhere where there's a lot of economic dichotomy between the haves and the have-nots, right? And you can make that tale of two cities more and more a tale of one city, where everybody has enough to be happy. And those will, there will always be plenty of people who are super rich, and that's wonderful, that's good for the economy. Um, but in order to, let's just say, move forward in an economy that now services over seven and a half billion humans on Earth, you need to have less people in abject poverty, especially when there is so much, when there's so much cash flowing around in circulation, there's so much currency in circulation, there's so many assets in circulation. You know, it's important that we um, don't forget that third of the people. Right? I mean, it's one out of every three human beings. And you might not know any of them because maybe you're privileged enough to live in a wealthy society, but a third of the planet is destitute and very poor and has no access to financial services. And that's one of the reasons they're so destitute and poor. Right? And providing them with such an opportunity could radically change their experience in life in a positive way, hopefully. Right? Um, so anyway, by the way, if you want to check out Athlight, I'm going to put the links in the description below. Check it out. There's an airdrop if you want some free tokens. Um, and you can join the crowd sale and get them at a great price. Anyway, I don't want to go on too long about that, but I do want to say that I think that there's an enormous opportunity, not just for Athlight, although that's one crypto that I really like, as obviously I've been speaking about it now for some minutes. Um, there's a huge opportunity for, well, I call them do-gooder cryptos or, you know, community-concerned cryptos, cryptos that are looking out for the betterment of mankind, not just as a, you know, greedy, self-centered, or totally individualistic form of money. And I'm all for individualism. I think it's super important. But I think it's also important to look out for your fellow man, right? You can't forget, we're human beings. We're very social creatures, even if you know a bunch of completely antisocial people who never leave their apartments. The fact is, human beings in general need other human beings. We're super social, right? It matters to us a lot. A lot of people will just have a hard time or probably couldn't get by without other humans. Uh, so, social interaction, the gains felt, the benefits gained from social interaction and community are unquestionably part of human culture and they are important to foster and to develop in a positive way because the more you have large communities improving their financial status in the world and able to do things that they couldn't previously do, well, the better the world is in terms of quality of life for humans and the environment in which we live as long as we don't you know, abuse the world that we live in, right? It'd be a shame if all the trees disappeared. It'd be a shame if all the you know, all the water was polluted and the air was polluted, so we need to make sure that we don't forget that. So eco coins, you know, ecologically friendly coins, they also matter, right? Um, cryptocurrencies that look at saving the birds, right? Cryptocurrencies that look at saving animals. That might be their primary function. Yes, apparently the birds agree. Um, <laughs> or they disagree. But if we use our resources smartly, then we can foresee a future where not only human beings have more access to 
financial security and, and growth. But you also have the environment getting the advantage of new technology that's maybe powered by clean energy, for example, solar powered coins, right? Water powered coin, you know, coins that are mined by clean energy. Um, those coins would be beneficial to the environment and would help clean up the environment um, just by existing, right? And one such coin is a coin that I'm developing. Um, I'm not going to say much about it right now because it's still a little early, but it's already well into the development stage. When it's worthy of any news, I'll be sure to tell people in the world. Uh, but for now, I just want you know I want to leave you with the thought that crypto is more than just money. Right? It's a much bigger concept than just money. Yes, it enables digital financial transactions, but it also enables other forms of transactions. It could be you're selling real estate. It could be, well, I saw recently that there's, I think, a footballer, a European footballer, right, what Americans would call a soccer player, who sold literally, essentially, digital portions of himself um, by making a coin. I think it's called the JR10 or something like that. Anyway, whatever it's called. There's a footballer out there who has literally sold assets of himself, digital assets. Now, I, I'm i not sure I'm comfortable with that idea, but that doesn't mean it isn't right or it can't be done because it has been done. Um, but could it be a way for people to create a new form of digital, I don't want to call it slavery, but indentured service or paid service or control over other people or, well, maybe slavery. I don't know, but it seems like selling yourself is not a good idea, right? Um, yes, salespeople will say, I sell myself all the time. That's how it sells. Them. Yes, but when you're actually physically selling or when you're actually materially selling a digital asset that controls a portion of your life your, or your net worth or your anything, it just seems a little weird to make a cryptocurrency based around owning parts of or owning the a portion of the value of somebody because right? that it just seems odd and more than a little creepy nevertheless it's happening right and all these developments that are happening in crypto you know they're bigger than just money right you can affect the world around you right you can make a crypto that is intended to help get humans to mars right why not you could make a cryptocurrency about that right people are going to invest in this particular project they want to build a private project that isn't run by Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or Richard Branson. They want to have their own, you know, Mars project driven by a community. They could build a rocket ship and send people to space or whatever based on community contributions, right? Because right now, well, at the start, anyway, you know, if you wanted to invest in SpaceX or Blue Origin or all these other things, um, it's not so easy, right? You have to have tremendous financial capital to just get in the game. But what if you could buy in at five bucks, ten bucks, a hundred bucks at the start? Right? What if they allowed you to? What if you had access to a community project that was geared for that kind of participation? Right? Well, that would probably make that community effort a lot more of a popular effort because there would be so many more owners, right? Yeah, there would be some management issues or who controls this, who controls that, but you'd be able to get a lot of things done. And I'm just saying Mars is a throw it out there, you know, kind of rocket over the moon concept. But really what I mean is, you know, any kind of community project that you can think of that could be benefited massively by cryptocurrency, um, it goes a lot further and deeper than money. And it goes a lot further and deeper than anybody has yet thought of because those applications have not yet been created. So... I look forward to an exciting future with crypto. Um, it's amazing to watch it evolve. And I hope that um, you find it interesting enough to do your research and look into it and see what your, you know, see which projects or tokens or coins you find interesting. Um, anyway, that's gonna be it. It's been a really long video, much longer than I thought, but I'm gonna let it go now. And I thank you again for all the participation. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so or like the video or heart it or comment, whatever, whatever platform you're watching it on, um, you know, engage. That's what matters. Uh, let me know what you think because, well, this is a community effort in a sense that I want to hear back from you guys. The feedback matters. Uh, so thanks again.
And until next time, take care. Buy